In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, the sign of the cross. The sign of the cross. Okay. We are, we are, we are now going back to Jerusalem. The glorious holy Jerusalem, which symbolizes heaven. So, we can remember that Jerusalem, actually today, is you and us. We are the new Jerusalem. We are the Catholic Church. That's the new Jerusalem. So, we have here, uh, we've just stated this Jerusalem here, and uh, we're going to zoom in on this place here. We've, we've stated fairly clearly some of, the, well, uh, some of the outlines of the general picture here, that this is where the old uh, uh, center of the Israeli life, which is the Temple, was. This is called the Temple Mount. Here is the Aqsa Mosque. This is the Temple, the Omar. This is called the Omar Mosque today. Actually, Omar didn't uh, build this mosque, but uh, because he visited, it's called the Omar Mosque. And that is called the Aqsa Mosque where we have the Knights Templar, uh, and you can see this is an oblong, so this is the church. Actually, we'll come to it in a minute, but boy, this is actually the church. I just, I just mentioned this in passing. This, this uh, construction, this beautiful construction, was constructed by the Christians. <laughs> so, uh, we, 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 all, we have to give credit where credit was due. The dome, this dome, this dome, we've just stated, the uh, model for the dome was the Holy Sepulchre behind here. Yeah, the Holy Sepulchre is the, the dome. Okay, and the Holy the Holy Sepulchre dome was the Santa Sophia in Constantinople, constructed by Justinian the Emperor, uh, and uh, that was a beautiful dome. And the the, the Holy Sepulchre was then built here. And then after two or three hundred years, the Muslims came along and uh, they constructed this. And all, why, why are the mosaics so beautiful? We'll see them in a minute. Why are, this is all mosaics so beautiful. Because the Muslims conquered the Byzantines and the Byzantines were the masters of mosaics. So these are beautiful mosaics. Uh, and the, 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 the bricks and the construction of this, why, why was it so easy to be a builder? Because about uh, 20 years previous to the construction of this building, uh, the Persians under a guy called Khosrus invaded Jerusalem and he pulled down all these sacred buildings and so it was very easy for the Muslims to collect the relics of the Catholic churches to construct this. And the eighth, the eighth, is the eighth beatitude. So this construction, although it's uh, supposed to be a, a Muslim construction, actually it was designed, built, and uh, finished and decorated by Christians. But that's no slower than anybody else, because we all come on other people's shoulders. But anyway, all right, now, we're going to come, we're coming to zoom in. So this is 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ went daily to the temple, well, very often. The whole of the focus of his life was the temple, because the temple to the Jews was heaven. So, we are, this, this series that we're doing is about the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is the temple of God. The Catholic Church is heaven. The church of those is the kingdom. Uh, the Catholic Church is paradise. It is the whole universe. So this this uh, temple, which was constructed by Herod, which is the third temple. The third first temple was King Solomon, three thousand years ago. The second temple was Zerubbabel, and after five hundred years was Herod's temple. And intermediately there was what is known as Ezekiel's temple. Ezekiel's temple was when the Jews were taken to Babylon, he had a kind of mystic vision of the ideal temple. So he constructed in his mind and wrote it all down in Ezekiel, which is a sort of a, a dream fantasy of the ideal world 
the ideal temple. So that's called Ezekiel's temple. But Ezekiel's temple actually didn't exist, except in the mind of <laughs> this guy, Ezekiel, you know. But anyway, now we're looking at this here. Now, Jerusalem, this is, this is Jerusalem, okay, this is the, the, this is the, the, this is the temple of Jerusalem. Jin Men, you see, this, this is the, the Golden Gate. The Golden Gate, we mentioned this before, these city walls around here, the Golden Gate, were built by the Muslims. Yeah. But at the time of Christ, there was also a Jin Men. And Jesus Christ, very often, every day, he used to come in here, come in here, and he went, for example, Solomon's porch, uh, when he said, uh, I am the, the, the shepherd, that was in the feast of the dedication, and he was here in the Solomon's porch here, we've got the royal porch here, and when he kicked out all the, um, the salespeople, uh, he went in and he, he kicked out everybody because he said, this is a house of prayer. The court of the Gentiles, court of his, this is here, anyway, this, this court out here is everybody can go here. Because when, when the people went to Jerusalem, they had to do a lot of buying and selling. So it was quite legitimate for them to set up their stores to change money, buy their, buy their doves or whatever the sacrificial things. It was perfectly legitimate. There was no problem there. But Jesus Christ was so full of zeal for his house that he kicked the lot out and he said, no no buying and selling now. For example, in every Catholic church, we have the repository, you sell some little books, there's no problem in it. But actually, ideally, you should kick them all out. <laughs> no, bus no business shopping in the Catholic church. Now, well, we'll go to the center of things. We'll, we'll come, come, come to here. The Holy of Holies. Now, let's just remind ourselves that the Holy of Holies is building up to the point for you and me. We, every day at Mass, we Sanctus, 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 Holy, 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 Cabot. Jesus asks us, demands us to be holy. That is, the, that is the command from God. We have to be holy. Holy, Jesus Christ, you must be holy as your, my Father in heaven is holy. It isn't that we're just going to be, I'm doing a, good, a few good things, I'm helping the poor, and helping, no, we have to be refined as perfect, not a spot of blemish in our souls, otherwise we cannot go to heaven. That is why the Catholic Church has purgatory. We must be purged. Okay, so that is the Holy of Holies. The Ark of the Covenant was where Jesus, where God resided. He came from, uh, from uh, Egypt, which symbolized the earth, came down to Sinai for 40 years, and then came to the Holy of Holies, where he put the Ark of the Covenant, which is where God, it says here, the Ark of the Covenant, according to the biblical terminology, was God's footstool, Yahweh's footstool, and Yahweh's throne. Throne. So, of course, if we want to be a bit uh, meticulous, we say, well, how could that place be his footstool, <laughs> and how could he be his throne at the same time? Well, these are terms. These are terms that God resided, came. He came down on the, on the Ark of the Covenant, on the Holy of Holies, and he was there. Whether we, we use terminology, because God obviously didn't have a foot, he doesn't have feet, and he doesn't have to sit on a seat, so obviously he was not sitting there, but that's human terminology. The Ark of the Covenant was God's footstool and throne. That means that, that he resided there, and we can go to him all the time. So, the great thing about this Holy of Holies is that we all know that uh, there's, a, there's a curtain between the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place. That's called the Sanctum Sanctorum. And you have here the Ulam, and this is the, the, the Debir. This is called the Hekau and the Debir. Ulam, Hekau, Debir. Okay, and, and they're in there as yet. Now, the, the thing about the Holy Poets I'm saying is this whole caboodle, the whole bang shot kitchen sink <laughs> has been transferred to the Catholic Church today. We can find all these elements <coughs> of the term in the Holy Poets. So that's where it used to be. Now here, we have here, for example, we, 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 we get a bit of closer look here 
of the this thing here, you see, look. Okay, all right. So we have here. This is the altar of innocence. Now the altar of innocence of incense is between the menorah and the showbread. The incense, as we all know, uh, symbolizes prayer. So we have here this is the altar of incense, and we can remind ourselves of a little story which will come back. We we'll remember that when the whole Old Testament turned into the New Testament, when was that? When Zechariah, uh, John's father, was here looking after the altar of the incense, and the angel said to him, you're going to have a son. Uh, and that happened here. So it was very apt that you had an Old Testament priest here, and he was struck dumb. Why was he struck dumb? Because the symbolism is that he was the old Israel. He couldn't say anything more, and God, Jesus Christ, takes over. But anyway, we have the altar of incense. Now, the, the, the table of showbread, uh, as I've just stated, <laughs> last night I was in the Catholic Church. I happened to work in the Catholic Church. And I spent the whole night in church. I wasn't praying, I was sleeping. But anyway, I was in the whole Catholic Church. Why? Why was I? Because in this Catholic Church we have 24-hour adoration. And we can remind ourselves that our lives on earth, the engine of the universe, what is the engine of the adoration? The liturgy. Liturgy means the work of the lay people. So we can remind ourselves that our, the, the life of your life, my life, is adoration. Your life, my life, is worship. Our whole lives. Now we can remind ourselves, how can I spend 24 hours worshipping God? Well, if I don't spend 24 hours worshipping God, what do I do? I spend 24 hours worshipping myself. All my life is, I'm, I might say, oh my, is my digestion going <laughs> well? Can I walk properly? Can I think properly? Am I going to get Alzheimer's? Am I going to get sick? What do other people think of me? I am adoring myself all day long. Uh, and all oh, what, what, what God is going to say is, look, okay, you have problems with dandruff. <laughs> you have problems with your gait. But the main thing, God says, love God with your whole heart, your soul, soul, and your whole mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And all these things about whether you're going to be old, whether you're going to be decrepit, whether you're going to be rich, whether you're going to be whole. It's a 24-hour job. So this, just, just this table of showbread is a, a kind of simple of this thing. God, Yahweh, is the light of the world. God is the, the food of the world. They are, we offer up all these things to God. Now, gradually, this here, the holy place, in, the, in, the, in, in every Catholic church, the, Jesus Christ is the life of the world. Jesus Christ is the living bread which has come down from heaven. Jesus Christ is the perfect prayer. We join ourselves with, with Peter. So Jesus is the living bread which has come down from heaven. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the perfect prayer. That is what Mass is. So the whole, all these three elements are transferred into the, the Holy of Holies and, and that's what it's all about. Now, this just, by the way, these these various distinctions. For example, the women's the women's court. Actually, it isn't specifically just the women's court. The women just means that everybody can come here. Okay. Now we can go on. We'll we'll we'll, we'll carry on the next one. I just have just a sudden preview. What is the next thing? I've forgotten myself. Okay. The next thing. Oh, the cube. Okay. Bye bye. We're going to say heaven is a cube. Bye 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 bye. Okay. See you again. Yeah.